Hello, my name is Donald Lewis, Professor of Entomology at Iowa State University. And as part of the Iowa Vegetable Production and Management Series, today I'm going to be talking about tomato hornworms. This is one of the common problems that we have in vegetable production, whether it's high tunnel or out in the field or even in the home garden. So a common one to talk about and I'll share my screen to uh, help us get started with that. The, the tomato hornworms, as I said, are very common, very well known, and not a terribly difficult one to recognize, but one that we do have to pay attention to uh, because they are occasionally a problem. Now, the tomato and tobacco hornworms are almost always present, but not always. And that's why we need to have some very good monitoring. We need to have some very good uh, observation skills to find out where they are and where they're uh, going to be. There are actually two different species, and both of them can be called the tomato hornworm, even though technically tomato hornworm is a different species than tobacco hornworm. Tobacco hornworm is the one that we more commonly see in Iowa. So uh, tobacco hornworm is the one on the left, and the way I tell them apart might seem a little silly, but what works for me is to remember that the tobacco hornworm has a red horn on the last abdominal segment, much like the lit end of a tobacco cigarette. Whereas the tomato hornworm, the horn is either green or dark colored, sometimes even black. So the way I remember them is red horn, like a red cigarette, like a red lit cigarette is the tobacco hornworm and the one we're more likely to see here in Iowa. The tobacco and tomato hornworms have a complete life cycle. You remember the four stages are egg, larva, pupa, and adult. And the adults don't start very early in the season. It's often mid to late summer before the adult moth appears after having spent the winter in the ground. They're a large moth, four to five inch wingspan. They're active at night. They'll probably never really notice them unless you see one around your porch lights or around the street light. But they're a large moth that visits the tomato plants and picks out, out of all the plants in the world, picks out the tomato plants or the potatoes or the peppers where they, she will lay her eggs. And lay, eggs are laid on the undersides of the leaves. Those eggs then hatch into really teeny tiny hornworm caterpillars. These may be no more than a quarter of an inch in length. And that means they're going to be difficult to see, they're going to be difficult to detect, and they aren't going to eat much at that stage, at that size. But three to four weeks later, those hornworms are totally grown, and they're now three to four inches long. And so in a month's time, they ate enough of your tomato foliage to grow into a large caterpillar, three inches long and as big around as your thumb. And of course, by that time, damage is becoming very obvious to uh, the, uh, the plants. There's not a lot of um, need for routine chemical treatment for tobacco and tomato hornworms. Oftentimes, you can control them by picking them off by hand. The problem is you can't see them or you don't notice them until they're fully grown. And at that point, the large caterpillars are easy to find, easy to pick off, but the damage is already done. It would have been great if we could have found them when they were smaller to begin that hand picking. Spraying any of many different insecticides is an appropriate control. And some people will like to go the organic route and say, well, I'll use Bacillus thuringiensis spray because that's a good control for caterpillars. It is only effective against the small caterpillars. And that's a bit of an issue that if they're large enough to see, if they're large enough to easily find, it's too late for the insecticide to be effective in controlling them. So spray is not often done, but it could be done with any of the insecticides that are labeled and registered for this particular pest. Speaking of insecticide sprays, a brief reminder that we do have a Midwest vegetable production guide, and it is divided by crop, 
and you can find the insecticides that are currently labeled for all the various pests on all the various vegetable crops in that guide. After the caterpillars are grown, they will drop to the ground or they'll drop to the soil where they crawl in through a crack and they make a pupa that is fairly large. It's about an inch and a half to two inches long. It's bullet shaped. And then it has this particular feature of the mouth parts forming like a jug handle off the head end of the pupa. Pupa waits through the winter and wriggles the moth then and wriggles out of that pupa the following year and comes to the surface and climbs out to fly around to look for tomato plants and start the process over. So one generation per year, but because moths don't all emerge at the same time and because they lay their eggs over a long period of time, you can find caterpillars of several different sizes. It looks like there may be overlapping generations, but it's really just one generation extended out over time. There's an interesting sidelight to tomato hornworms in the, in the garden and in the greenhouse or in the field, and that is frequently we find them being attacked by a parasitic wasp, and that's the one on the left. That unfortunate hornworm is host to a couple dozen wasp larvae that have consumed its innards and have now formed pupae on its back. So this is a story that starts with a very small non-stinging wasp who looks over your tomato field and finds the tomato hornworm and lays a couple dozen to three dozen eggs inside of that caterpillar. And you can see that wasp has emerged from the pupa. You can see the stinger coming off the end of the abdomen. And those eggs then hatch inside the caterpillar body and develop into larvae that eat the inside of the caterpillar. When the wasp larvae are full grown, they chew out of the caterpillar and make their cocoon on the back. So these are not wasp eggs. These are wasp cocoons that have come out and um, uh, of a caterpillar that is nearly dead and nearly gone. But the interesting thing about this is, okay, it's nice to know, it's fun to see that that caterpillar died, but we really don't get much biological control out of this particular insect. Well, tobacco hornworm, tomato hornworm is a common pest that you're going to see uh, probably every year or occasionally. Remember, they start out as a moth at the beginning of the season. They then lay eggs that hatch into little tiny caterpillars, which feed for three to four weeks, either on the foliage of tomatoes, peppers, potatoes, and related plants, occasionally chomping right into the little green tomatoes. Damage where the leaves are gone is sometimes easy to see. And by that time, the caterpillars are grown and control is going to be less effective. Stay tuned for more videos in this series. But for now, we'll call that it.